All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section, which is modeling with graphs. So we're going to spend this section uh, looking at graphs and modeling some mathematical situations. Uh, you may be wondering what that picture is. That is what we're doing. We're creating mathematical models. That is a mathematical model. See the calculator in his hand? He's modeling math. Ooh, a little rough, a little rough. What about this? What if I did this? Added a little cape right here. Now what is it? That's right, super model. Super mathematical model. Let's take a look at some super mathematical models here. Let's go back to our, uh, our friend here, Professor Splash, our little story about him and his world record with a 36-foot uh, belly flop into one-foot pool of water. Let's just watch that again because it's pretty neat. Excellent. So what we're going to do is we want to model this guy's fall, uh, and we, we created this graph. You kind of sketched it last section. So here it is, 36 feet, boom, he's falling, picking up speed, picking up speed, boom. Uh, he hits the ground, and then there's that one-foot pool of water. So let's just talk about his fall right now. This is a mathematical model here. We have an equation to represent it. This is his height over time. So remember, we have this is our time and our height, our h and our t. The independent variable uh, time is causing his height to change. So let's plug in these points. Remember, before we looked at the graph, we said, yeah, at 0, he's at 36. We could look at the graph. And before we said at 1 half, how tall is he? Well, one half is, ooh, somewhere in here in this ballpark. So we could guess. We could say, yeah, he's around, what, 32, 33 feet? I don't know. That's fine for the last section. But now let's use this equation. This is equation is gravity pushing him down from 36 feet is what this is. So plug these values in. We know the time is one half. So we can find the height of Professor Splash if we plug in one half into T. So now this model is nice because it's going to give us an exact height at that time. So uh, what is 1 half squared? 1 half times 1 half. Be careful, it's 1 fourth. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. And what's 1 fourth of 16? A fourth of that is 4. And then we're going to add 36 to that. And we're looking at a height of 32 feet. Oh, my gosh, I guessed it. <laughs> All right, so you weren't supposed to be able to guess it. <laughs> that was a pretty good approximation. But now I know I don't have to put the approximate thing there. He is exactly 32 feet in the air. So that point is actually 32. So no guessing. Boom, nailed it. How about at 1? It looks like uh, he's at 20, but could you make sure for sure? Yeah, we're going to plug it into the equation. And we're going to say, uh, can I slide this over maybe? Create some room here. Let's slide this bad boy over. Uh, so basically what I want you to get to is I want you to realize that the equation is going to generate points that you can put into a table that you then put onto a graph. So we go from a, any way, we can go from a graph to a table to an equation, equation to a graph to a table. So we're adding an equation into the mix in this section. So let's do it real quick. At one second, let's plug that in. At, a, at When t is 1, can we find this guy's height? Professor Splice, sure. I love squaring 1. What's 1 times 1? It is 1. And then we're going to add 36. One time, uh, negative 16 times 1 is negative 16. And so this turns out to be 20 feet. So again, okay, so these worked out friendly. We're going to get some decimals and some trickier ones where you can't really tell. All right, so again, I kind of excluded the, this water line here at one foot. Remember, this is going to change his equation briefly, but let's just pretend there's no, this sounds so morbid, there's no water. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, uh, let's look at these things without the water, and then we're going to put the water in there. So what are intercepts? So why intercepts? Uh, jot this down real quick. Why intercepts? is where the graph's going to cross the y-axis. So, uh, hence the name, you're intercepting the y-axis. Any guesses on x-intercept? Sure, it's where it crosses the x-axis. So let's look at these points. The y-intercept where it crosses, here's the y-axis. Remember this y-axis, x-axis, is right here, boom, 36. So in this case, uh, when time is 0, his height is 36. So the y-intercept is a point, it's 0, 36. And what does it mean? It means he starts... 36 feet in the air. So I, we're going to ask you to interpret intercepts uh, and write them out, label them. What's going on? At time zero, if you're stuck, you can say at time zero. At time zero, he is 36 feet in the air. How about the x-intercept? So again, pretend there was no water. Here it is right here. This is where it's crossing the x-axis, and we can roughly estimate that for now. We will find them exactly. It looks like what? It looks like about one and a half seconds. So what is that point? That would be approximately one and a half seconds and then zero. So check this out. This means the height is zero at one and a half seconds. So what's that mean? It means at one and a half seconds, his height zero or he would hit the ground. 
So if for some reason there was no water, it would take him one half seconds to be Professor Splat, <laughs> not Professor Splash. But there is water. Let's say that's kind of morbid. Let's say there is water. And so what we're talking about now is a point of intersection. So what is a point of intersection? This is going to come up a lot in Chapter 3. Uh, it's where two lines or curves cross. So they don't have to be straight lines. Like we have a curve right here. He's, this is a curve. It's a quadratic. We're going to learn about that later. And then this is a line. So where do they intersect is the point of intersection. So that's this point right here. So right before, I mean, it's really close to when he would just kind of hit in the ground. So the point of intersection would be roughly, I don't know, maybe 1.4 seconds. And I know it's one foot off the ground. It's definitely one foot off the ground because that's where the water would be. And this would be the point of intersection would be where he hits the water. So uh, at 1.4 seconds, he would hit the water. Thank goodness. There we go. So this is our new stuff. We're adding to this section. We're going to look at equations to generate points to make the graph. And then we're going to analyze intercepts and points of intersection. So we're going to have two curves or two lines. Pretty awesome. All right, let's check out. We're going to talk about submarines. We've got a submarine that's 900 feet deep. So let's go ahead and mark that. He's 900 feet deep down here. And what's going on? He rises 50 feet per minute. So luckily, this is in minutes. He goes 50 feet. So he's going to go halfway because that's 100. So this is submarine A, which I have in green. I'm going to draw a little green line here so you know this is going to be submarine A over here. And I could keep this going, can I? These little dots, every minute he goes up 50 feet. So this makes a nice, perfect line. So this sub is coming up to the surface. Awesome. What about uh, sub B? Sub B is this one. We're going to do them in red over here. Where does he start? He starts uh, on the surface level. So he starts at zero. So he's up here floating on the water, and he's going down 100 feet per minute. So what is he doing? He is doing something like this. Oh, interesting. So we've got two things here. Can we draw, uh, or sorry, can we, we have the points. Can we fill in the tables? And I would like to make some graphs uh, out of this. So real quick. I'm going to go to the equation from this. I got some good information. Let's start with submarine A. So if you remember back, you probably did a lot of this before, y equals mx plus b. So remember, uh, I'm going to put it up here. m is the slope or the rate of change, and b is the y-intercept or the starting point. So can we fill these things in in our equation? Can you tell me where this guy started? Yeah, sure. Where did he start? Submarine Submarine A. He started 900 feet deep, so be careful because that's a negative. He started 900 feet below, so he's down here. That's his y-intercept. Then what's happening? What's his rate of change? He is gaining 50 uh, every minute. So I'm not gonna. I'm gonna have these in the practice, but I'm not gonna put this part in the master check because it's kind of review of last year's stuff. We're gonna hammer that out more uh, when we talk about systems of equations. So we will. We're gonna kind of do that all year long. So. If that part's tricky for you, that's okay. Practice, try it. Uh, but you are going to be responsible for these graphs and tables, and I'll give you some equations here on the master checks. Boom, there's his equation. Can we come over and do the same thing for this guy? You know, this y equals mx plus b thing. Um, so we need a rate of change, and we need a starting point. Where did he start? Well, he started at the surface level. So what is the surface level? What, what height is the surface level? It's plus zero. Or you don't have to write it. Plus zero is worthless. Uh, you don't even have to write it. What's his rate of change, though? Sub B. Sub B is going down how much? 100. So he is negative 100x. So I don't like that plus 0. It looks weird. So we're going to see it more like this. Y equals negative 100x. So now we have our equations. Fantastic. So now you have options. You can fill in this table using the graph. Let's use the graph on this one. I can just look. 0, He. I know he starts at 900. There is his y-intercept. At 2, he's going to be right here at minus 800. And at 4, he's going to be here at minus 700. So that's using the graph. Awesome. What about using the equation? Maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I want to use the equation so I can plug it in. Uh, if this is my x and y, and again, if you prefer to use uh, t and, you know, uh, instead of x and y, you could have used t for time and d for depth. It's the same thing. If you prefer to say, yeah, his depth is negative 100 over time. That's, that's perfectly fantastic. That's actually great to use the real letters in there. Same thing over here. If you prefer to say his depth is uh, gaining 50 feet per minute, but he started at negative 900. Oops, I used X. Unbelievable. Let's try that again. <laughs> he is gaining 50 feet per time for a minute, 
minus that 900 feet. So if you want to use those letters, whatever is easier for you, uh, they're both correct, they're both great. So if I plug this into the equation, let's go ahead and plug it in over here. I'm going to say, oh yeah, time is zero. So what is his depth when time is zero? Well, it's zero. Zero times anything is zero. What is, let's go right here. What is his depth when time is two? That's negative 200. And then what is his depth when time is four? That's going to be negative 400. So you can definitely use your equation on this, and you're good to go. How about point of intersection? Uh, yeah, we can draw these lines in here, these nice straight lines. We can say, yes, this is very linear. He has a constant rate of change. And submarine B was going down. And he has a constant. Where do these two bad boys cross? They cross right here at this point. Boom. What is this point? The point of intersection would be, looks like it is at the six-minute marker. They are both negative 600 feet. So that's the point of intersection. And then you maybe have to write out what does it represent. It means at six minutes... Both subs are 600 feet deep. They're at the same spot. They're passing each other. Um, excellent point of intersection. Fantastic. Moving on. So now that we know uh, that equations make these tables make the point, we can graph anything. Like maybe you have no clue what this looks like, and that's fine. I can still graph it. I can plot points until I have, and you can plot as many points you want until you have a good picture of this. So I'm going to give you some points that are kind of reasonable, and let's just plug them in. So if x is um, negative 5, what happens here when I plug it in? So the y value will be the square root of negative 5 plus 5 plus 1. So what does that equal? Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. What's the square root of 0? The square root of 0 is 0, so it's just 1. So negative 5 is going to make 1. So right off the bat, I know negative 5 makes 1. Here's a point. So I don't know what this looks like, but I know this is going to happen. Now let's do negative 4. If I plug negative 4 in here, negative 4 plus 5 plus 1. Again, what is negative 4 plus 5? That's 1. I like this because what is the square root of 1? The square root of 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. So 1 plus 1, 2. This is going pretty well. Negative 4 makes the point 2. So I got another thing. Oops, I don't know what that is. Uh, all right. So how about negative 1 when I put that in there? If I want to find the y value, we're going to say negative 1 plus 5 plus 1. And what is negative 1 Ooh, it's not writing. What's going on here? Okay, there we go. Negative uh, 1 plus 5 is 4. What's the square root of 4? It's 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Wow, this looks like, is this linear? What's going on here? Oh, no, it's not linear because check it out. Negative 1 makes 3. So it's definitely not linear. It's kind of got a little curve to it here. And this is nice. 0 is probably my favorite number to plug in. Plug that in for x, and you get uh, the square root of 5. 0 plus 5 is 5. Square root of 5 plus 1. This doesn't simplify. Holy cow. There's nothing I can do to this. Uh, this is actually the answer. This is it right here. Don't freak out. I call these uh, bean answers. Uh, why? Because they, they look weird, and they're, they're kind of hard to work with. It's the square root of 5 plus 1. Uh, definitely a bean answer, but that's fine. You know, we can make this a decimal and approximate it if we want to. You know, square root of 5 is like 2 point something, 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 I don't know, plus 1. It's, it's 3 point something, something. So it's just not very friendly. It's just something above 3, and we could type in the calculator if we really wanted to, but it's somewhere in this area here. So don't freak out if you get bean answers. That's okay. Uh, how about if I plug 4 in? So plug 4 in here. I hope this guy works out friendlier. So 4 plus 5 gives me that square root of 9. And that does work out better here because what's the square root of 9? It's 3. 3 plus 1 gives me 4. So I'm back to friendly numbers here again. So we've got 4 makes 4. So way out here, and we're kind of getting some pretty good, some, some good points here. And then we can do negative 9. So let's put negative 9 into the mix here. Uh, negative 9 plus 5. Uh, what's going on here? Negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. Plus one. All right. So this answer right here is weird. It's kind of, I always think of like Sullivan's hair on this. It does not exist. Boom. Does not exist. It's impossible. So you got some issues here because square roots can never be negative. So we say it does not exist. So there's no points. Basically, anything after negative six will make this negative. Anything after negative five, really. So if I wanted to kind of connect the dots, I could. It's going to be this curvy thing like this. Uh, that goes on forever and ever. Nothing over here. So now we can graph these square roots. 
Uh, but just plotting the points is enough to get a general shape. And we could plot more and more. If you weren't happy with that, we could connect all these, get some decimals, and be good to go. So you can graph anything in the world. Just plot some points. Awesome. Here we go. Let's wrap it up with one more problem. Um, so before I give you an equation, then I'm going to give you, once I give you a word problem, now I'm going to give you a graph. So we have Timmy and we have Cat, and they're at an arcade playing video games. And I drew their line. So label this. The top line here, mine's in red, is Timmy. I didn't put that in your notes. Cat's the bottom line. And what I want to do is fill in the table, make an equation, and find all this fun stuff. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, take this. And I'm going to help you write Timmy's equation. And I'm going to see if you can get Cat's equation. So we'll do Timmy together. You do Cat, and then see if you can answer the questions at the bottom. So let's talk about Timmy here. Can we do his MX plus B? Do we want to use quarters and time? Let's just stick with MX plus B for now. If you want to call it a T for time and Q for quarters, you can. But just to get us in, back in the swing of this MX plus B, what does Timmy start with? So if you look at the graph, what is his y-intercept? He starts with 40. And these are 40 what? These are 40 quarters. So he has 40 quarters. What's his rate of change? So you have to use the graph. How is it changing? Well, he's going down. Careful the scale. He's going down 5 and over 2. So use that scale. He is, he is losing 5 quarters. Let's erase this, his rate of change. He's losing, so it's negative 5 quarters every 2 minutes. So it's a fraction. Uh, it's his slope of the line, or it's his rate of change. So there is Timmy Cat. And let's fill this in. Uh, your x, your independent, is the time. And this is measured in minutes. And then your y is quarters. And it's measured in the number of quarters. So if I use my equation or if I just look at it, 0 I know is going to make 40. Uh, 4, I'm going to use the, the line here because it makes 30. It's a little bit quicker. And then 14 hits at 5. But you could plug those into your equation. Uh, excellent. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to figure out Kat's equation right here. Fill in her table, and then tell me what the y-intercept is, the x-intercept, and what is it in the point of intersection, and what it means in this situation. So go ahead and pause the video. Good luck. Uh, so let's compare what's going on with Timmy and Kat, two different people. It's not like Bradgelina or something like that. These are two different people, uh, Timmy and Kat. So did you get the equation for Kat right? She's losing five quarters every four minutes, so be careful of that scale. And she started with 30 quarters. There's her tables. Notice 14 was tough over here. I couldn't look at the graph. I mean, you could eyeball it, but she's stuck in there. Uh, and maybe you guessed 12 and a half, but this equation shows it. If you go ahead and put 14 in there, you're going to get 12 and a half out. Awesome. How about uh, Timmy's y-intercept? So he starts at 40. This means at time zero, he has 40 quarters. Uh, that's this point up here. Maybe we should mark that point on the graph right here. And then his x-intercept, where does it cross? It crosses down here at 16. And what does it mean? It means he ran out of money. At 16 minutes, he has no quarters left. He spent all of his money. So he started with 40 quarters. 16 minutes later, he has nothing left. Was there a point of intersection? Sure. It happened right here. They crossed. And I'm looking at, at 8 makes 20. So at least label it. At 8 minutes, Timmy Cat has... Uh, 20 quarters, and Cat has 20 quarters. They're both at the same point. They both have 20 quarters. So we're just labeling that. That is it. That is the section right there. Again, take your time with the practice. Grade it. Make sure everything makes sense, and good luck on the mesh check. Peace out.